Hello everyone, Glenda Mollett here and I'm not in my craft room today. We decided last spur of the moment on yesterday to go camping. So I am actually, that's the view outside our back window in our trailer. Isn't that gorgeous? So I hope I brought everything and I've had to put my phone on data. So because the Wi-Fi is not the greatest here. So I'll just give you a little 360 view of the window out the back of our trailer. How close we are to the ocean. Yep, that's the ocean. So let's walk down my trailer and I'll put you up on the stand. Hello, everybody. And um, we'll get going here. Hang on. There we go. Got it all set up. Hopefully I've got everything. So have you guys been enjoying yourself so far today? I must admit, um, it's not Powell River right across Alice. That's um, Laskidi Island. And then behind that is Texada. And then behind that is Powell River. So you can't really see Powell River from here. Okay, so I'm just expanding so I can watch for comments on my computer. There we go. Okay, now she needs to be quiet. Oh. I tell you, it is spectacular here. And if if you ever want to go camping, this is the native campground in Qualicum Bay. That's what it's called, the native campground. And um, there's no sewer, but there's water and power. It's amazing, and I will come here again. But I digress because I've had to pull myself away from sitting out in the sunshine. But that's okay because I've been watching. I, I must admit I did not watch at 6 o'clock this morning when Marcy started, but I have been back and watched them all. Hey, Amy Ran. Oh, I thanks so much for everybody for joining me. Um, have you been enjoying it so far? Holy macaroni, talk about all those cool tips and tricks and stuff we've been getting. I love it. And I can't go wait to go back and watch them. And if, if I forget to say it at the end, coming up after me at uh, 1 o'clock Pacific time, 2 o'clock Mountain and blah, 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 blah. Leanne is going to be doing the alcohol and blends technique. And holy moly, she showed me some cards last night. They're spectacular. Oh, good, good. I'm glad it's been a good day. And you know that you can always go back and rewatch them. I've, um, in the comments, in the description of this video, I put a, the hashtag um, May 2021 and also May 2021 blended background. So if you are looking for the video and you can't find it, just search for that hashtag and it will pop up. Okay, so... My card is not time consuming, so that's why I'm doing a lot of talking. So I'm doing a blended water spritz, spritz background, and along with a lot of my other Silver Sisters, I'm also using the Meadow dyes. So I think this is going to be a runaway, like the, the Hippo dyes were the last time we did this. I think everybody now needs to go out and get these Meadow dyes because you can do so much with them. And I wish I had brought a couple of cards to show you because you know this negative part you get? Okay, well, you wouldn't use this because there's too much holes. But if you cut one out and then say I'm going to use this, this bachelor button here. There's a good one. So see the bachelor button there? If you take your negative and put it on your envelope or your inside, then you can use your blending brushes just to color in the holes like this and then you'll end up with this gorgeous sponged so if I remember to do that I think I'll be able to do it I'll try anyways let's go okay so for this card here's the recipe I have a piece of Calypso coral eight and a half by five and a half basic black five and a quarter by four and also five and a half by six and I added adhesive sheet to that one Basic white, five and an eighth by three and seven eighths, and one by three for the sentiment. 
Um, I'm using the Pale Papaya Ribbon, Meadow Dyes, Blending Brushes, Sweet as a Peach for the Sentiment, because that is so pretty. And then a water spritzer, just one of our water spritzers. The ink I'm using are, is Pale Papaya, Mango Melody, Calypso Coral, Poppy Parade, Pear Pizzazz, and Memento. And then I brought my Winky. I'm going to do a little flicking, and I have a mask. And then inside, I have basic black... Um, the layer of basic black that's five and a quarter by four and then a layer of basic white that's five and an eighth by three and seven eighths so there's i hope you got time to um write that all down so i've already done my die cuts because i didn't want to haul my my big shot or big shot my stamp and cut an emboss machine with me so this is the five and a half by six inch piece of basic black and i added a the same size strip of adhesive sheet on the back and then cut them out. So there's all my pieces. I even had, I even pre-cut my sentiment. So I'm going to leave those all off to the side because I have to do the background before we can do anything. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, I am going to get my my dirty paper out from underneath here because I don't want to get ink all over my my lovely wood grain mat love it so this is just a piece of copy paper and I put you can't see it because I put the ribbon over top but if you can see right there I used a post-it note as a mask because I want a definition between the ground and the sky if you don't want that definition you don't have to you don't have to you can just blend it all so maybe that's the way I'll go with this one and show you the difference so I'm going to start at the bottom with pear pizzazz and get my blending brush I love these bending blending brushes holy man when I use them I ink I load the the brush up quite a bit and tap 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 it off just so you don't get that really dark streaky splotch when you first start and then just keep moving and you can go back and forth you can go around in circles you can go up and down either way works then I want a little bit more so I'm going to do the same thing I'll start on this side so that I get them kind of even and you just play with this until you get the depth of ink that you makes your heart happy. So that's my motto for 2021 is to do what makes my heart happy. We've all had a terrible, terrible year. Well, it's not been terrible. I enjoyed 2020 because I got, to, it was a good excuse to stay home and not go anywhere. And BC is just now starting to open up. I should have explained. I live on Vancouver Island um, in BC. I am in Port Alberni, which is on the west coast of the island, but actually on an inlet, so more inland from the coast, but still on the coast. Okay, uh, Pale Papaya is next. Uh, there it is. So I'm going to... So that's why I love sunsets and beach and water you may have seen me commenting um this morning on the seascape bundle so i just want my pale papaya to be in the middle so i'm just loading up my brush and going down you have to be careful when you do this that you don't create mud in the middle because some of these colors do go muddy. And you also have to kind of let it go. If it's not looking the way you want it to look, just leave it and let it dry because it is completely different when you when it dries. Okay, so that's pale papaya. Oh, I'm not watching comments. And I should be. I'm sorry. Let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. Oh, Alice, then you know it well. Yes. Yes. 
It is amazing. And I love this technique. Yep. You can go back and watch anything that the Silver Sisters has put on is still in this group. Even, I think this is our third one. So you can go back and watch the other two, like Tamara said. Good. Hello. Can I add a picture of the dimensions? I will try, Debbie. And if I can't, then I, I should be able to on my phone. Yeah. Oh, Alice, get them out. Get, they, they need some loving. <laughs> okay, good. Then I, Tamara, I'm not going to worry about the comments. Thank you. Okay. So now I'm going to Mango Melody. Now you don't have to clean in between your blending brush in between the two oranges, but I do anyways, because I'm just that OCD. Now this one is really, really dark. So you really don't want to have a lot of ink on your brush when you start and don't do what I did there. I stopped and to move my paper and I got a, a blob, but that's okay. These blending brushes are pretty forgiving. They kind of tend to unblob things if you keep going. Oh, look at that. Oh, isn't that awesome? Okay. So that's the end of Mango Melody. Now we're going to put a little bit of Calypso Coral on there. So this is just a, a dollar store um, microfiber rag that I'm using. Nothing fancy. Okay, now the rest of it is I'm going to use the Calypso Coral. And the thing to remember when you're doing blended backgrounds like this is less is more. So you can always add extra color, but you cannot take it away if you get it on there and it's way too dark. So start light handed and just blend your layers till you get the depth of color you want. Thanks, Tamara. I love making... Um, sunset backgrounds comes from my days spent in Tofino because their sunsets are awesome I recently did a I think it was on one of my Facebook lives I actually did a sunset with the sun in it and you also used the meadow dyes on it and it really turned out nice so if I can, re if I remember to, I will stick a, a link to that video in as well, because it's the same kind of technique, only done a bit differently. Okay, so this is starting to, to get that depth of color now that I want. So I'm going to do a little bit more blending right here between the mango and the calypso coral. Oh, Ted's outside watching the sun. I told him he was not allowed to come anywhere near the trailer while I'm doing this. And he had to stay off his phone. I don't know why I said that because I I had to hotspot. So there's internet here, which is awesome, except it's Shaw Open. So it's not exactly the steadiest thing in the world. So I had to do my hotspot on my phone. There we go. So now at this point... I haven't added the poppy parade yet to darken up around the edges, but if I wanted to put a little bit more mango on there, I can. you can go back afterwards and add more. Just remember to clean your brush before you go from dark to light, or you will be very disappointed when you get Calypso Coral in your Mango Melody. There you go. So you get the idea. I can work on that. I could get rid of that splotch there in the middle, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so where's my, there's my red one. Thanks, Kathy. So now I'm going to add some Poppy Parade. 
and I have I don't have a blending brush for every color I have one for every family like the greens and the reds and yellows and you don't need to you can you can definitely use one for more than one color family but in case I forget to clean them as I'm um, using them that's why I have different color families so I don't have to clean them when I'm doing a project I can keep them active so I'm just adding a little bit of poppy oops poppy parade around the edges just to darken the edges up just a tad and I got a little carried away there and have a blotch but you know what I'm letting it go see how it's starting to get dark because you don't want to go really dark all at once you want to be able to add layers of color in there oh isn't that pretty oh thanks Elizabeth <laughs> yeah it's not me it's all the blending brushes they do the the work I tell you these things are amazing and I'd never heard of them before we started carrying them so I had to go to my customers who'd been using them for years to figure out what the heck these were and how to use them but that's okay that's how you and keep your customers engaged is when you ask them questions and it's called call to action so if I was doing this with my customers I would say so what other colors do you think you could use to have a gorgeous sunset and then you'd get interaction and the more interaction you get on your videos the higher ranking they are I'm using the meadow dyes Lynn okay so there's my piece and it does dry differently when it dries it's just wet so now I'm taking a piece of paper towel just because I want to protect my surface because I'm going to be spritzing with water put that in the middle now I have a one of our spritzers that's filled with water and I always label mine because I have water in some and rubbing alcohol in some and then I have um, bling in some you know where you mix the of course we don't carry it anymore the uh, champagne mist shimmer spritz and rubbing alcohol oh, I got some in there and I have bleach in one too. This would be cool with bleach. It would be a different, totally different technique. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to test it. Make sure it's not coming out in a stream. Because I don't want it in a stream. I usually do it in my garbage can, but I don't have a garbage can. And then I'm going to be about maybe 8 or 10 inches above. Let's see if I could. And then I'm just going to spritz. that's it and then leave it you have to walk away from this now you can see I've got a little bit too much right there so I'm just going to sop some of that up uh oh guess my sentiment's going to be on that side because I got a little carried away and I don't want it to run I want it to be blotchy so I'm just going to hold it down if you if I was at home and had my heat gun, I would use the heat gun. Okay, so now I'm going to put that off to the side so that it dries out of my way. And we'll just we'll work on getting the rest of the card put together. I can do the inside. Oh, and I can show you that cool blending on the envelope. Let's do that. So there's that bachelor button. Now you have to be really careful when you do this that I'm not I don't want to go so far to use this and if I was going to do this in real life I would have like on a separate piece of paper I use um, thick whisper white at home and cut the right in the middle so that you cover your entire envelope so I have to be really careful okay let's use calypso coral for the head I know bachelor buttons are usually blue but you know in my world they can be any color I want them to be Oh, I put away my dirty paper that I need. Let me get that out again. 
Okay. So just put it on your envelope where you want. You can do your inside this way too. And then you just lightly go over the top. Just like that. Now, the sponges and the daubers are good, but I don't think they'd work very well for this technique because they would tend to catch on all those little itty bitty pieces. So I'm just adding color. And I don't care if I get the blotches on this because that just adds depth to your flower. There we are. So I've added the Calypso Coral. Now I'm going to go get my pear pizzazz back out. And my green. And just do the rest of this. Oops, see, I went over on that, but that's okay. Let it go, Mollet, just let it go. It's an envelope. But I have a rule. I never send out a card without putting a piece, a custom piece on the inside and customizing the envelope. Because, you know, if you start doing that on your cards, your customers get used to doing it, and they'll buy more cardstock and envelopes from you. So there you go. Look at that cool technique for your envelope. Is that not amazing? I love it. Okay, carrying on. Shall we do the inside too? So drop me a, a comment and let me know if you want me to do the inside like that as well. Or if I should... Um... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I didn't cut this down, and I don't have my paper trimmer. Oh, well. Okay, you're going to see ad adapting at its basic form here, because I forgot to cut down my inside white piece. How weird is that? Okay, just pretend that this is a paper trimmer, not a pair of scissors. I always make mistakes like this. The worst ones are when I prep a class. I remember one class I did and I had completely forgotten two key in, in ingredients in my class. And it was a virtual class because it was last year during COVID. So I had to put them, all the pieces, get all the pieces together when I'm live in my, in my class and put them in my car and go out to all of the local participants and drop them at their front door so that they would have they would have um, pieces to complete the card because it was really important. Inside, please. Rip the edge. Oh, you could rip the edge. You could, Elizabeth. Totally you could. Of course, I didn't think of that. Okay. Going to do the inside too. Wrong brush. There we go. Inking up with Calypso Coral. Adding, oh, this one's got a nice blotch on the in the center of it. Oh, that's going to add really cool definition. Ooh, I love it. Okay. I never, it never, I never remember to do like ripping the edge or something on the inside. That would have been totally cool. I'm going to try. Oh, see, I've got this down further than I did on the envelope, so I don't have to worry about it missing. Should have gone up a bit. Oh, well, you know, these things happen. <laughs> God, don't you love it's like it's not only like Christmas Day when your package arrives, but it's like Christmas Day every time you try something new and it works. All you want to do is jump up and down and scream, I did it! I did it! It worked! Yep. 
my poor long suffering family. Okay, so I'm going to put this onto the black for the inside. Love my stamp and seal. And I don't have it with me, but there was a tip from one other demonstrator to keep your silicone mat um, handy beside you. And when this doesn't roll, just roll it on your silicone mat first. And it helps advance the, um, the stamp and seal so it works. Okay. To get this. I like it because if you screw up and get it crooked, you can move it if, as long as you don't push it down. Okay. That's a little on the crooked side. Shh. Don't tell anybody I'm doing this. There. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Yeah, it's it really works. I used to do it on my hand, but you know, sometimes that hurts. <laughs> Your natural inclination with these things is to push like crazy hard on these the stamp and seal and you don't need to. But I have to keep telling myself soft, soft. Now, doesn't that look better than just a plain inside? And you can add a greeting in there too if you want, but I like lots of room to write my stuff on there. Okay, so let's bring our, see the, the background now? All the splotches have raised the ink. My splotches are a lot bigger than this one. This one turned out a little finer. This one didn't, but that's okay because it's not supposed to be perfect. That's why I like this technique. Because it is what it is. And perfection is in the eye of the beholder anyways. I have glue on my fingers. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. Doing your inside in your envelope to me is just a natural progression of your card. Oh, this one's crooked too. Holy man. I had um I had 36 hours at home to prep 3 days worth of stuff that I was going to do because we came yesterday. So I was going to do, I had my day planned out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and now of course I'm missing them, so I had to squish all that I was going to do in three days into one day. So now I'm going to put my ribbon on, like that. And I usually use tear and tape, but I forgot to bring my tear and tape. So when you're putting ribbon on, if you put a nice big strip of adhesive on the back, and then put your ribbon where you want and then you just have to fold it around and it holds and you don't have to worry if you got if you do it this way you have to worry that you got it in the right spot but by doing a strip up and down you don't have to worry about that because it's it's there where you want it and then I usually line it up with my grid paper but I don't have my grid paper so we're going to pretend this is my grid paper. Let me see if I can get it so that it's straight. Okay, and see this one needs to go up a little bit. Now, you don't have to do this. This is for OCD people. <laughs> there we are. So now I'm going to put my adhesive right over top of my ribbon. And by doing that, it never moves. I have never had ribbon when I've done this technique. I never had ribbon move, ever. Okay, we'll put this on here. A oh, little bit of flag, cardstock flag there. There we are. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, the pieces. So I cut out all of them. 
These are all the die cuts that you get with the meadow dies. Of course, I can't pick this one up. There it is. There. So those are, that's everything you get. That and that. And then there's a full-on butterfly and there's a side butterfly. My favorite of them all is the bachelor button. So now we get to play with it and see. Now I've discovered that these um, adhesive sheets, you can play with them and lift them a bit, but you don't want to lift them too much because you'll end up destroying the sticky. So lay them out first. Let's see if we can use that one there. Okay. I'm trying to cover up that blotch. Oh, maybe you can do this. Have a short one. We can do that. And have a long one. And then have... No, don't like that one. I like this one. That one's better. There we go. There. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, so now if I was smart, I would have done this before I put it on my card base because then I could cut them off where I wanted them, but I'm just going to hold them in place and snip them. Now I'm going to hold on to that because I want to I want to use that. So now I'll just take the adhesive strip off the back. And that one's going to go here, right down to the bottom. And then this one goes next. Whoops, caught on the ribbon. Come on, out. Thank you. I love these adhesive sheets. I hoarded them when, because we used to sell them and I hoarded them for a very long time and I used them only for me. I didn't use them in my classes. <laughs> Oh, it's so bad. But then we started carrying them again, so I was back to being able to use them in classes again. Just taking out those little pieces in the middle there that didn't come off. And this one is going to go... And I haven't pushed... I'm not going to push that one down yet because I need to get this one on there. I'm missing the comments and this sounds like some really cool things happening. <laughs> well, I only know bachelor buttons because I used to grow them. This, I think, is probably some kind of a, a carnation or something. Okay, is that going to look? Let's move that one over just a titch there. That's better. I don't didn't want them to be overlapping then. Oh yeah, they're they're an old time flower. Okay, now I'll push it down. That one's already down. This one we'll push down, and this one, I want to make sure I don't overlap there. There we go, right over top of the ribbon. Now, this piece. I love this piece. So let me just hack that off and see where we're going to use that. Yep, let's stick it right in there. Okay. You don't have to use these in their entire form either. You know, you can cut out, cut them out and then use them in pieces. Snip that one off there. And I think that's all I'm going to use. You know, you get to the point where it's just too much. And this one I'll use the, the full-on butterfly because I've got the space there to do it. Now, 
I did not bring Tombow. Okay, because what I usually do with my butterflies, and this one has adhesive, so it may not work, is I put my fingernail along the body and tilt the wings up like that. Then I put Tombow glue down the center and a dimensional on each wing. But this has got adhesive sheet. So I don't know whether the, it will remain up in the air like I want it to, but I'm going to put... Oh, not a full dimensional, because I forgot this butterfly is teeny tiny. So I just got to use a part of the dimensional. Come on, off my finger. Thank you. And the closer to the body you go, the higher your wings are going to stay. Like that. Now I'll take those liners off. And we'll put this butterfly at a jaunty angle there. There. Now, no matter what you do with your card, how many times it goes through the mail, those wings will never flatten out. They will always remain popped up like that. Isn't that cool? Love it. Okay, I've lost my sentiment piece. Here we go. Oh, I have Memento Ink. And the Happy Birthday from Sweet as a Peach. Because I love the font. Now, you've heard of the tap and what did they call it this morning? I call it the tap and swirl, tap and twist. There we go. Just to get nice inkage and then center it down. And I just rub back and forth on it and hold it, hold it steady with two hands so it doesn't rock. That way, if you got ink around the edges of your stamp it's not going to ghost on you and just rub not firm but not gentle either back and forth just to give the ink time to transfer and there you go perfect dark inked image whoops okay now this is going to have dimensionals on there And I always, I always put at least three dimensionals on when you do a sentiment. That way it doesn't rock back and forth and tip and do all sorts of weird things on you. Okay, card coming back in. Take the liners off. Yes, the twist. Do the twist. And then... Oh, except I got ink on my fingers and now I have a blob there. Oh, well. When I go home, I'll just take it off and redo it. So another tip. Let me clean my fingers. I don't know where I got all that ink. Oh, my God. Black pants. Gotta love them. So do you know how to remove things that have <laughs> saggy? You don't want saggy sentiments. Do you know how to remove something that has dimensional on the back of it? just take your scissors go underneath here and cut the dimensional you have to be really careful that you're not cutting cardstock and then it pops right off then you just remove these little bits that are on here now that I've now wasted a bunch of dimensionals but I wanted to show you this cute little trick that I learned that was one of my aha moments at one of the, I think it was one of the conventions, I believe. Then you just pull these pieces off and put your dimensions back, dimensionals back on again. And there you go. You've removed it, redone it, putting it back on. Just that easy. So that's what I'll do when I get home so I can, or I'll put a bling on there. There's no bling on this card. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. Oh my gosh. I was going to show you the, the, before I put the background on, I took my Wink of Stella. Make sure that your, your tip is juicy. You got to have, 
you got to have stuff there and then just like this all over your card and you'll have you'll have lots of blingy sparkly bits on there just like that you probably cannot see it so the more aggressive you go the bigger your blotches are so look at those blingy dots on there oh and you can't see it in the background i'm sure but now the back background is all blingy too so the one last thing i'm going to do is because i have this other butterfly i'm just going to pop it inside because i have it and i'm going to use it and there's a blood right there and we'll just pop your butterfly in there so there you go ladies so lots of sponging and flicking and spritzing in a really fun way to get a different background because this gives it texture this one i was more aggressive with the spritzer and got bigger blotches this one i was lighter so if you don't like the blotchy look then go further away from your cardstock be about a, a foot up and if you want you can hold it over your garbage can and go from a foot up and spritz and it works so on the envelope on the original one i sponged a little bit of um, pale papaya in the background before i put the the die cut on there and i sponged around the edge not sponged i used a blending brush the, or sorry also right here in the corner blending brushes are not the best when you're trying to go around like do your usual um, sponging technique around the edge I find it you've got to work at it a little, little bit harder to do that oh you're very welcome ladies thanks so much for joining me has anybody got any questions before I head off back out to the beach for an hour and watch um, Leanne and her alcohol and blends technique oh my god she is so good at this I love it and then I'll be back at two o'clock to um, Sean is going to do multicolored embossing and I'm going to moderate for her and we are like five minute drive from Tidal Taco which is one of the supreme taco places on Vancouver Island so I might have tacos in my future either today or tomorrow you never know i love tacos thanks so much ladies i hope you enjoy our day we really really enjoy putting these event events on for you guys so enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you next time stampin smiles bye for now